Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.3, part 2. We're discussing multiplication division uh, of whole numbers and an application to area. Uh, this is video 2, and it's our multiplication applications. The first thing we're going to look at is uh, an application problem that maybe some of us have encountered in the real world. Maybe we go to the store, we have to buy some uh, CDs. And uh, we want to know how many we're getting and how much information we can store. So here's our application. It says a CD can hold 650 megabytes, MB, of information. How many megabytes can 20 CDs hold? So let's say we have to save some information. Maybe we're saving some photos from a digital camera or something like that. And we have lots of them. If each disk can hold 650, and maybe I'm going to buy 20 of them, I want to know how many megabytes of information in total that I can save to these disks. So <clears throat> what we're going to look at is if I have two, or 650 and I have it 20 times, that's the operation I'm going to do. 650 times 20. So this is how I would interpret this problem. And when it comes to any story problem, make sure you read it, read it, read it before you even begin. Read it at least three times. So a CD can hold 650 megabytes. And I want to know how many megabytes 20 of them can hold. So <clears throat> we realize we're going to multiply. So I'm going to do 650 times 20. And if I do this vertically, I'd have 0 times 0, which is 0. And 0 times this is 0. And 0 times that is 0. We'd have lots of zeros here. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little shortcut and say I have a factor of 0 here and 0 here. That's 0 times 0. Well, that's going to give me 0. But since I have two of them, I want two zeros here. And then I'm going to start my multiplication by the non-zero number. All right, if I go 2 times 5, I get 10. And I carry the 1. 2 times 6 is 12, plus that 1 is 13. 13,000 is the value I get. Now, if we think of another way to look at it, if I just covered up those zeros, it was 2 times 65. And then I add two zeros. That's one way to multiply by what we call factors of 10. So I have 13,000. But if I don't denote a unit, this number makes no sense. I always have to have a unit when it comes to application problems. 13,000 what? Well, we're talking about megabytes of information. So I give it the unit MB, which is our abbreviation for megabytes. So if I have 20 CDs and each one holds 650 megabytes of information, I can save 13,000 megabytes of information. All right, so we have our units. We have. Uh, our quantity, that's the answer to our story problem. So let's move on to the area of a rectangle, another application where we can use multiplication. But before we look at this, let's recall what we did with perimeter. If we're working in perimeter, we found that that was the uh, distance around the entire polygon that we're measuring, in this case, a rectangle. And we know that this side is the same as this side. So I'd have for perimeter w plus w. And this length is the same as that length. So I'm going to say length plus length. Now, an application to perimeter and multiplication is we are repeatedly adding w. So how many times do I have it? 2w. Twice, I'm going to add w. And then twice l. So instead of having to add up Every side, I can say two of these plus two of those. It's an application to multiplication. And this is a formula that we can use on any rectangle. So maybe we want to commit this to our memory banks. All right, so that's just a review of perimeter and how multiplication can apply. But now we're going to talk about area. Area is not the distance around. It's the uh, space that this may occupy. How much area does it cover? Well, that's where the term area comes from. To find the area, we want to do length times width. And I always like to denote the longer side as my length and the shorter side as my width. But it really doesn't matter. You could call either one the other. So area is defined as length times width. And when we 
find area, we always have to be aware of units. Just like we did in the last story problem, units are important. So let's look at this example here and say, OK, if this is 2 inches wide and 3 inches long, let's divide this up. So in this direction, I divided it into two equal spaces. And I'm going to say for reference purposes that this is 1 inch and that's a 1 inch for a total of 2 inches width. Now we have 3 inches, so I'm going to divide this into three sections. So if I divide this into 2 and this into 3, each one of these will have a unit of an inch. So it's an inch this way and an inch that way. So we have a square inch. When it comes to units of area, they're always the squared unit. So right now I can determine, since I'm finding area, I'm going to have inches square, which is the same as writing it out as square inches. This notation is something we'll get to in the future when we talk about exponents. But right now, you can write it out as square inches. It's always the unit times itself. And that's what that denotes. So if we look at this, if we divide it up this way, we can just count the squares that we have in units of inches. One square inch, two square inches, three square inches, four square inches, five square inches, six square inches. So my area is six inches squared, or six square inches. Now, that was kind of time uh, intensive and tedious to actually divide this up, especially when these numbers get larger. So what we can do is we can assess what are we actually doing. Well, it's the area is the length times the width. 3 inches times 2 inches, well, 3 times 2 is 6. Inches times inches is inches squared, or square inches. And we get the same result. So I can say 2 inches times 3 inches equals 6 inches squared. And I apologize for the writing there. But it is 2 times 3 is 6. So we found the area. All right, let's look at another problem just to make sure we understand that concept. Now, if I have 2 centimeters, my units are centimeters. And by 9 centimeters, so my length is 9 and my width is 2, I can say 9 centimeters times 2 centimeters. And this is the preferred method is to actually multiply the length times the width, because if I wanted to divide this up into two, well, that's easy enough to do, saying that this is one centimeter and that's another centimeter. But to divide this up by nine, it's not going to be an easy task. And it's going to be very time intensive. And then to count them all would be prob problematic. So let's look at this, length times width. I can say nine times two is 18. And the centimeters are multiplied together as well. Centimeters times centimeters is square centimeters. So we can see that we have 18 square centimeters. If I have a rectangle, that's 9 by 2. 9 times 2 is 18. All right, so for your practice, try to find the area of this. We have a rectangle with 16 millimeters and 12 millimeters as opposing sides here. So you can determine which one you want to denote as your length, which one's your width. That's really for you to decide. But go ahead and find the area of this particular rectangle and always be aware of units. The units here are millimeters. MM is that abbreviation. So give that a try. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you.